Hi, I can tell you this right now. I don't want to cut away all my flaws during this video because it takes too much time. I am a father, I have a job and this is a hobby. The YouTube stuff is a hobby, so I don't have time for cutting all that away. So welcome! If you are like me and have been interested in film and photo for pretty much your whole adult life, but haven't turned into a career after, before after turning 40, you probably have run down into some of the problems I have done. You see, you don't need much equipment to start out. As they all say, it's not about the gear, it's about the skills. And some other YouTubers have started, been starting to say that yes, it's about the gear also. And uh, that's probably right. But it depends on how far you are running down the rabbit hole in this stuff. If you are very interested and you don't manage to stop, you actually can find yourself in some kind of side career to your day job and that side career with filmmaking can turn into more jobs, longer jobs, more severe jobs and more often you're gonna have jobs. When you're starting out you can start out with only the body and a good lens. You can do very much with your movement, your body movement and tricks and tips and tricks. But you will pretty early find out that if you're going to do more of these jobs, some equipment could come in very handy. One of these things is a gimbal. There is IBIS in the Sony cameras, which is very good, but you can never hold your hand as still as a gimbal. So, then you find yourself buying a gimbal and you will get footage which is pretty stable and probably you have to stabilize it more in post-processing processing even. I am an engineer and I don't I am an engineer and I don't know if this has to do with that but heard about gas gas gear acquisition syndrome I have that and many of us video makers have do have that so after buying the gimbal or probably right before, I bought a cage to my camera because a cage makes it easier to hold the camera still. It puts a lot more weight to it and you can have a top handle. From there, you have a lot of holes in the cage so you can mount all sorts of stuff. So then I bought a side handle which you can turn around also made things very much easier but then the screen was too little so I bought a new monitor to even see better what I'm doing and you can also make your customers see on the side what you're filming without bringing a separate monitor I had an AGM HDMI cable for this, but it was too stiff and too long, so I had to coil up the cable on the side of the camera, which was pretty much in the way when I was running and gunning with the camera. Then I needed a proper mic. This was actually the first thing. This was actually the first thing I bought. Very good mic, lit, small, easy to mount, easy to bring. But at some point you have to bring the audio levels up as well. 
This one is a Sennheiser MKE 600 with a XLR mount. I didn't know what an XLR mount was. I didn't work in the, the audio business. But after watching a ton of YouTube videos, you see that XLR is a standard when you're leveling up your game. But this camera, the a7 III, which is a very good camera, and I have now used for three and a half years, and three years professionally, doesn't have an XLR input. Here we have a 3.5 millimeter mini jack. So then you need uh, an adapter from XLR to the mini jack. This works on phantom power on batteries, so I can use it now with this camera. But later, when I am bringing the FX3 or FX6, I guess, into the game here, I can use the XLR on the handle. Okay, so not many customers react to the camera's small size. The DSLRs are pretty small, or not DSLR, it's a mirrorless camera, this one doesn't react to the small size. But then you read something about that clients takes you more seriously if you bring a bigger camera. And actually, I have turned into that question sometime, not too long ago. They said to me, oh, you, bring, you brought the small camera? Where is the big one? So, to make the small camera even bigger, you can buy a matte box which also can be used to hold flares out of the lens. Then if you are going to work long days and you have a monitor, you have a camera which runs on battery and you probably need some, some um, weight balance on your camera, a V-mount battery is proper for that. And yes, I thought that I could connect the camera and the monitor to the V-mount. Not that easy, not via USB-C. USB so, I had to bring in the dummy battery with a D-tap mount. I never heard of a D-tap mount before I saw this connection here. So I had to read something watch some YouTube videos, and whoops, I had a D-tap dummy battery for my monitor. I tried to run the camera from the USB-C to the USB-C on top of this small rig V-mount battery. And it looked like the battery on the camera was drained anyway. I didn't understand, so I contacted the store where I bought the small rig V-mount battery and they said that, oh, the Sony a7 III doesn't have power delivery or PD out. That means you can't supply the camera with power from this V-mount battery at the same time as you are filming. That came on later iterations of the Sony cameras. So then I am powering the monitor alone from the V-mount battery. But the good thing about the V-mount battery is, as I told, the weight balance is much better. And you can also push the camera against your chest. Which is much more ergonomical during the filming. So. Back to the case and the question about does gear matter? The Sony a7 III is now many years old. I bought it when it's, I got it to my 40th birthday when it was about two years old, I guess. So now it's probably five years old and I'm still using this camera for professional work. The thing with the gear is that you gotta know what kind of gear you have and you 
got to know how to work around the weakness. So, for instance, in this camera, we only have 8 bit color range, which makes it easy to crush the blacks and and clip the highlights in post-processing. So you don't have that dynamic range to work with when you are color grading and bringing up the shadows and turning down the highlights. Therefore, exposure in camera, it's therefore exposure in camera is very important. So we have to pay attention to that when you are filming. Still, you can color grade to a certain degree and you can bring out some information if you know what you're doing in Premiere Pro, which I use. Since I have been doing this for about three years now, I started my company in September 2020, in the year of COVID. I have tried to optimize my gear. Unfortunate, unfortunately, there is much more gear coming into my to my uh, stable here uh, maybe more than i want but i actually use pretty much all of the gear i have brought whether it's lighting audio camera lenses and accessories bags roller cases i also do photography because i'm a hybrid shooter i have strobes I have speed lights and everything which follows photography. At the beginning, in the beginning, I thought that I could live off one camera and maybe one camera for, uh, for safety, additional second camera. But what I see now is that video is much more um, Video is uh, more on demand, so I wouldn't have nothing against having a Sony FX6 dedicated cinema video camera. But for now, I have this Sony a7 III as a cinema camera, cinema camera, video camera, video rig, and I have the Sony a7 R3, which is the equivalent with higher resolution for photography work. So I always bring both cameras to the jobs in case one of them is, uh, is uh, going down. So the gimbal and the rig is what I need to go to work. Of course, a lot of equipment with these but with this setup on the rig i can strip it down to the cage and put it on the gimbal i want to show you that in the next video so if you are getting bored get some skills in video making or buy some new gear i would say that inspiration comes with that